This is first time in quite a while I do not put original artwork at the beginning, but I like this map and I stole, I mean borrowed this from the internet. Uh, remember to follow me on the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more. One Piece Chapter 101 Reverse Mountain Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Uh, welcome, welcome, hello my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the wonderful tale, the adventurous tale, of One Piece. Uh, our last chapter saw us uh, at the end, you know, kind of everybody putting their feet together uh, and sort of saying, hey, this is what my goal is, this is what my goal is, everybody announcing and then going, we're going to the Grand Line. Uh, they had seen the, this, uh, the lighthouse and, uh, and according to Nami, that's the entrance into the Grand Line. I didn't quite understand it until this chapter, so I'm really, really excited and happy and thankful that Oda kind of gives us these maps every now and then, these drawings and these visuals, so I'm a very visual learner with things like that. So, uh, without further ado, let's dive right in, shall we? This chapter starts off, and it's actually entitled Reverse Mountain. And uh, it starts off where, uh, you know, as someone has mentioned, uh, I think it's Luffy, says, hey, you know, Nami, the, the light's gone out. And she says, well, that happens from time to time, you know, and, and uh, it, uh, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll figure this out. That's what you brought me along for. So she goes back down below decks, and she's looking at the map. And this is the map that they took from Buggy, if you remember correctly, of the Grand Line. And she says, you know, I've been looking at this, but it looks like we have to go, it looks like we have to go up a mountain. You know, it looks like the, it looks like the entrance to the Grand Line is, is a mountain, you know. And they're like, what are you talking about? We have to go, we have to go in a mountain or go through a mountain to get to the Grand Line? And Zoro kind of says the obvious thing that I was thinking of, you know, and he's like, can't we just, you know, go further south and just, and just go into it, you know? And uh, because the Grand Line is like this belt uh, that, that runs around, you know, around the, the planet, right? Around the, the, the globe. Well, she winds up showing, they show this really cool picture of it, and they show that uh, basically there is, uh, there's the Grand Line, and then separating uh, the, the seas, you know, the East Blue, where they're at right now, and the Grand Line, there is the, the Calm Belt. And there's a Calm Belt on each side of it, and it's basically like these dead waters. Um, so she's explaining about how it looks like we got to sail, you know, like we have to go and sail right up this mountain. And there's some talk about, you know, well, I, I've heard about that before, and there's a canal, and this and that, you know, and they're, they're basically trying to figure things out. While this happens, um, you know, all of a sudden Usopp goes and he's like, hey, the storm just stopped. And she's like, whoa, hold on a second, that's impossible, right? We were in the middle of this typhoon, <laughs> there's no way that the, this uh, storm could stop. So they go up above deck, and he's like, no, it's beautiful out here, right? And sure as shit, it's calm as hell, and they were just in this crazy storm, you know, five minutes before. So Nami's freaking out. She's like, "Oh my god, drop the sails, you know, get get to get the, you know, get the oars out. We got to row. You know, we got to row back to that that storm over there and you can see the storm kind of in the distance." So everybody's like, "What's going on?" And she's like, "I told you we're in that that calm belt, you know, and where there's no wind and and you know how it's, and she says to Zoro, she says, "You know how earlier you were talking about if we just drift south, you know, that's what we're doing right now." But she explains about these this these belts, these seas that you know that divide you know that divide the Grand Line from you know uh, separated from the actual seas from the East Blue and, and and so on and so forth. As this happens, we get this cool double page spread, right? And their ship is picked up out of the water on the top of the head of this weird looking giant whale thing, and there's a ton of them. There's like a whole family of them. I mean, they're huge. These are like Godzilla sized monstrosities, right? And they're like, oh my god, you know, and then Nami's holding on to the, the mast and she's like, oh my god, Neptunians, big ones. So clearly this is one of the issues of just trying to go in through the, the calm belt. That's why, you know, not just any, and she even yells at Zoro earlier when he's like, well, can't we just go in there? She's like, no, you idiot. She's like, if anybody could enter the Grand Line, everybody would do it, right? So, you know, this is, uh, it, it's not as easy as just going, hey, we're just going to go there. And I didn't realize that. I always just thought, hey, this is just a treacherous area to to sail because of all the, you know, the, the badass pirates that sailed it. I had no idea that this was actually like its own adventure, like journey to the center of the earth or like trying to find Atlantis. You know, this is really, really cool stuff. So um, they're able to go and, and uh, you know, she basically says, or, or somebody says, you know, uh, oh, you know, as soon as, the, as soon as they go back under, you know, we'll start rowing for it. And what winds up happening is this whale pretty much just goes, ah, choo, and just kind of sneezes their ship, you know, and just it propels in the air. Usopp falls overboard. Luffy, luckily, with quick thinking, is you know he sees Usopp and he just stretches his arm out and uses his very useful power and grabs Usopp, yanks him back in. 
Uh, they, you know, they, they wind up everything's fine, and then it, and then it's fun. It's funny because they wind up, you know, they're they're then in the next panel they they've gotten back to the actual typhoon, you know, where, where they were supposed to be in the East Blue, towards the entrance entrance of the Grand Line, and she's like, oh, whoever thought a typhoon would be, a, you know, would be a good thing, like all we have to deal with, right? So they're back in the storm and everything, and then she goes and she's like, oh, you know, son of a bitch, I can't, you know, I can see it. And they talk about how what the basically reverse mountain, what this is, this mountain is that all four seas and the currents converge on this mountain and these canals, and they all come together and converge pretty much at the top of it. And basically the way that that works is it pulls water up a mountain because everybody had been, you know, saying like, that's nuts, you can't go up a mountain, right? So they talk a bit among, uh, about it again, and Zoro's like, listen, I've never heard about going up a mountain. And Sanji's like, I think I have. And he's like, what are you talking about, about a current or about a mountain? And, you know, and he says, uh, he says, no, basically that like it's really difficult to get into the Grand Line. Like the word on the street he's basically, he's telling Zoro is, is that you have to be half dead before you can even enter it. So it's not, it's a chore. It's a chore getting in. So they wind up seeing, and you know, and Nami goes and she, she sees the, you know, the actual, um, the actual canal. And it's kind of cool because it looks like it's this, it's this, you know, canal with these stone sides going up the mountain. Prior to that, they wind up seeing the red line, which is kind of like the equator that goes around the other, the other way, uh, the opposite way from from the Grand Line, and crisscrosses it at one point. And this looks like just this giant cliff face. You can't even see the top of it because it's it's mired in clouds, right? So that's actually kind of cool. And again, I'm I'm a person who loves the journey, the traveling part of it. So that this is cool to me to kind of see some of the world, just a little peek into it, you know. So, uh, so they wind up going, and you know, and Nami's going, okay, listen, you know, we gotta, we just, you know, and, and Luffy sees it too, and he's like, he's telling Sanji and Zoro, you know, hey, you guys gotta steer, we gotta get in, we're we're just a little bit off, you know, I can see the canal, but we're a little bit off, and this thing, and sure enough, you know, water's racing right up the mountain, right, and uh, and he says, you gotta turn right, right, you know, and they're like starboard, starboard, and, and at any rate, they're they're both, you know, going and kind of spinning on the wheel, and it winds up breaking it and coming free, so now they're not able to actually steer and veer to where they need to. And going up the mountain, like in intervals, I don't know, every couple hundred feet or whatever it looks like, couple hundred yards, there's like these stone, almost like arches that come over the top, you know, just kind of akin to like something you'd see in like Stonehenge or something like that. And they go over the canal, right? But they're clearly headed for one of these things. And luckily with Luffy's quick thinking, he just jumps overboard, not thinking about anything except for that, hey, I have to save the ship because, you know... I mean, Nami even mentioned, hey, listen, if you screw up and miss this entrance, you know, you, you hit the current, goes, and you just smash your ship you're against the rocks, and you're done, right? So Luffy jumps over the edge, and he goes, gomo, gomo, balloon, right? And he just blows up into a big balloon and winds up caught, you know, making a shock absorber to uh, to absorb the shock from the boat that's about to hit into this, this you know, this stone arch. And is able to bounce the boat back and kind of get it on the course to go, you know, to go up into this canal, you know, and uh, and in the water that's rushing up the mountain. And uh, and then Zoro's like, so Luffy, give me your hand, you know. And Luffy goes, and before, he, of course, he falls into the, the sea, you know, he's able to stretch out, and Zoro's able to grab him. And and all in all, it's just kind of a fun chapter because, like I said, you get to see a couple of different maps. You find out a little bit about how things converge on this. Also, it gave me some insight into things and how they work with the Grand Line because, as I said, I'm you know I'm naive. I'm new to the series, and to me. It's just, you know, I just kind of thought, okay, well, you can just get into the Grand Line anywhere. Why, why the hell do you need a map? I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, as long as you know where it is, can't you just go there? Uh, but this is really cool how it's, uh, you know, it's a specific way of getting in there. So they go kind of flying up the mountain and uh, and then go and, you know, and then Luffy's like, okay, now we just got to ride it back down the current. And the, as they're at the top, they're at the peak, you know, of this reverse mountain and, uh, and and then going to hit the, you know, the right canal that they need to to go down to pull them down, the waters to pull them down into the Grand Line. Um, you know, they're kind of crest over the top, you know, and Luffy's like, I can see it, the Grand Line. And he's just got this great, big, excited face, you know. And uh, this is really cool because, uh, as I said, this is one of those things where, you know, a hundred chapters ago when you saw Luffy, uh, this goofy little kid, and, and just, um, I don't know, it just, it seemed almost comical in nature, and it seemed like the grand line and some of the things that he was talking about were just so far away. And I know it's just the tip of the iceberg, uh, brothers and sisters, but for me it's very cool because, like I said, it's the next leg, the next big step uh, on this journey, this this wonderful journey that, uh, that he's embarked on, uh, him and his crew. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. The question I have for this chapter is, uh, are you more of a, uh, a visual reader? Where when you read, I mean, and I'm not a person that needs to read books with pictures, okay? I read plenty of books that just have only words. 
But it is nice because I've read a lot of different fantasy type books and everything. It is nice when they go and they toss a map in somewhere. And you can, I always kind of like that feeling of like, we're here. We need to go here. This is the treacherous things in between. I've always kind of liked that visualization. So are you more of a visual reader, you know, where, where you like to see things like that for the locations and such? Or does it not really matter? You can just imagine it in your mind and you can just kind of lay it out and you don't really care. So um, I know it's kind of a, a silly question, but uh, but again, I mean, there's people that are different. I have uh, I have five younger brothers and sisters, but uh, my two brothers in particular, one is one way and, and one is the other way with that. So um, I definitely know that there's kind of two schools of thought on it. So let me know in the comments down below uh, which camp you lie in, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters. Um, Oh, let's see, that'll wrap things up over here. And uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, the like button, if you think I deserve it. And of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'm so excited to be on this journey with all of you, and we will look forward to catching you in the next one, nation. As always, thanks for watching, brothers and sisters. And remember, join the Nerd Nation. It's the right thing to do. Trust me, trust me. Tell them Jim sent you.